Okay, so this is Pi News episode 56, and for this I'm using the new Ice Cube Tower Cooler, which I've had in my previous video. So let's get into the news. So first up is a comment on my last video, and uh, I thought it was worth mentioning. Uh, so from Munker Pi, and Munker has done some really, really good builds on the Raspberry Pi, and has also been working on Twister OS. Uh, so I'll read out the comment. Hello everyone, we would like to let you know that the original Pi Labs team has stopped working on Twister. We have started a new project with the main focus on best possible performance and less visual pimping. Any possible new Twister OS build on the Raspberry Pi 4 is not authorised by the original creators. Thank you for your time and we hope to release a new image for your beloved SBC as soon as possible. Greetings from the Pi Labs team. Check your Discord messages for a link to our new Discord server and have a nice day. So I'm going to have a look in my Discord and, uh, and see what's up there. But I also checked the Twister OS Discord as well. Um, and uh, the comment on there, you can see here from the 20th of the 4th, Hey gang, Twister is not dead. A 64-bit bullseye based release is in the works. Munker and Salva have left Twister to pursue their own project and that is fine. Twister will continue to be Twister. Hope this clears things up. And PyLabs goes back quite a long way. So two years ago, uh, this was the first video uh, that I did on one of Salvador's build. Uh, and this was Raspbian 95 and it was basically Raspberry Pi OS uh, but with a Windows 95 theme. Um, but then this video had uh, Windows 98 running in a virtual machine uh, in Raspberry Pi OS and I was amazed at the time, uh, well and still am, it still works great and to be able to play the original GTA was excellent and over the time it's just uh, had more and more people working on it and evolved into Raspbian X which eventually became Twister OS, uh, which has had so many amazing things in it. The Wine integration, so the Windows compatibility has been brilliant. Uh, the gaming side of it has been excellent. I'd lo I've loved the themes. It has been really, really good. And I declared it my favorite OS. Uh, and they've only recently gone away from Twister OS. And the only reason for that is that it wasn't getting the updates. But now updates are coming back. So we are going to have two separate builds. I don't get into any of the politics of it. Uh, I've There's been great work by loads of people involved in the projects in the past and I really appreciate it. So the Discord is called the Armory and you can see here a post from Munker, uh, RPI4 will be the first device for the new OS mod based on Manjaro. Munker's done some great stuff with Manjaro before. If I go into my channel and do a search for Munkerjaro, We've had some really good games and really good internet performance on Munkajaro build, so I'll be definitely looking forward to that. But I'll definitely be keeping an eye on Twister OS as well. It's uh, it's great to have two teams of very talented people working on things. Uh, we're blessed with the Pi. It's the one single board computer that has the biggest community, and uh, and that's what makes it so great. Next up from the register, Ubuntu 2204 LTS arrives on everything from a two gig Pi. And uh, this is good news because traditionally 64-bit OSs tend to run pretty badly on the Raspberry Pi 4 2 gig. Uh, you kind of need to go for the 4 gig and the 8 gig models. They've done a lot of performance improvements on this version. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I know they've been talking about it for a while. Uh, I did actually try out Ubuntu on a 2 gig Pi, and actually with ZSwap, I had very good performance. It actually worked really well, but it'll be interesting to see an official release and see how well it copes with it. The arrival of GNOME 42 and its screenshotting improvements have made for a slicker, if not revolutionary, desktop appearance. I do like the way Ubuntu works and switching between Windows and all that. It is, it is a very nice operating system to use. And it says here, uh, while Pi support has existed since 2010, Desktop performance could charitably be described as leisurely. It, it just wasn't as fast as Raspberry Pi OS or some of the other 32-bit operating systems. But it does say here, 2204 LTS rattles along at a considerably better rate on the diminutive computer. So I'm going to have to download that and give that a try. Another OS uh, from Tom's Hardware. So optimized Raspberry Pi OS Diet Pi announces new release. Diet Pi is a very stripped down operating system that contains lots of elements to it, but actually tends to run well on lower spec hardware. I haven't done a review on it for a couple of years, I think, uh, but I was definitely impressed when I tried it last. So this is 8.3 fixes, updates, and new options added to the Swiss Army knife of Linux distros. Diet Pi is lightweight with a low impact on processing cores and RAM. It's Debian bullseye underneath, but highly optimized for minimal resource usage. Diet Pi provides benchmarks and comparisons against other popular SBC OS, which show RAM usage as low as 58% lower than Raspberry Pi OS with disk usage 41% lower. So yeah, definitely have a look at that. And there's links in the story to get it from the GitHub. 
Nice to see uh, more updates on box 86 and box 64. Uh, so as this post says, uh, where's this from? Gaming on Linux. Are you planning to do some gaming on ARM devices? You need to take a look at the box 86 and box 64 projects, which are really quite impressive. Since the majority of software, especially games, are built for x86 processors, the usual Intel AMD crop, ARM needs something stuck in between them to get them running, and that's exactly what these projects do. And uh, it mentions, there's a couple of links in here, and uh, it goes through the release notes and various different improvements, so lots of work going on on both of those. And uh, I'm very impressive that integrated into Twister OS, uh, so the box 86 is, and uh, they use that with wine. And just, just amazing what you can get running on a Pi uh, when it's completely different architecture than the software was intended for. Something a little different. Uh, so my attempt to render the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B in pixel form. Uh, so this, I mean, it's just, it's an image of the Raspberry Pi 4, but it just looks really, really nice. Uh, you can see uh, how it's pixelated and how it's designed and everything. The details here on the little cables, the USB drives. Yeah, it just it just looks cool. It's the sort of thing you could see on a t-shirt or something. I'd wear that. And here we have on Reddit a Raspberry Pi 4 case. Uh, and this is a cool one because it contains an SSD drive. So I wanted to try using the Raspberry Pi with an external SSD instead of the SD card and you do get much, much better performance with an SSD. So we have a look through the images here. You can see there's a little USB adapter to this. Oh, well, it's an HDMI adapter uh, to the, it's got a touch screen on the top. And here is uh, a USB SATA cable and you can see the SSD drive underneath. So all sandwiched in. And there it is without the casing, very nice. So I had an email from the people from Volks PC uh, to say that they've updated their Linux in Android. So Volks PC is basically a way of installing full Linux inside of an Android build. Comstock Kang makes the most popular Android builds on the Raspberry Pi and is always updating the builds. And every time the build changes, Volks PC have to adapt to be able to install Linux in it. So if you're interested in running Linux in the latest Lineage OS or Android build on the Pi, then uh, head over to Volks PC and it has all the instructions. I've got a tutorial on one of the older videos, so it's the same principle, you just have to use the updated file. Next up, I really like the look of this, uh, so it's probably best to go to this person's Reddit because there seems to have been a lot of updates. Every time I check, uh, there's been an update to this handheld Raspberry Pi. <laughs> there you go. So they're running Doom on this handheld Pi. You can see it's got uh, very much PlayStation controllers. Uh, well, there's even a PlayStation logo there. So we scroll down through. There's some great detailed pictures. I've actually got some similar. If these are the lithium batteries, uh, I've got some of these for something that Sunfounder had sent me, and I need to do that in a separate video. Um, but uh, analog triggers need some work calibration as they're a bit too sensitive. Here we've got a view from the front with uh, fairly large speakers, couple of analog sticks, PlayStation controls. That's one of four pictures, uh, here we go, so a 3D printed back it looks like. Yeah, looking very nice. And this is the first prototype, and there's, lo I mean this is, it's really detailed in here, there's so much information. I'm trying to find out what it's built on. So it's using the official 7 inch touchscreen display. Did you dismantle a PS controller for parts? Uh, very cool, and then it says only the buttons, but yes. USB out, HDM out, 3.5 audio out. Three 18650 lithium ion batteries, two Pi fans, and comparing it to my Pi 4, yeah, it definitely is a Pi 4 in there. Very, very nice. Next up, bit of a tutorial from Tom's Hardware how to make a Raspberry Pi Pico reaction game with Pico Zero. And you can see here, our project will introduce the basic inputs and outputs of the Pico Zero module via a reaction game designed to test the reflexes of two players versus an exceptionally loud buzzer. Uh, and if we scroll down, it's got all the details of what you need, some Play-Doh, and the breadboard, and the Pico speaker, and so on. But it, uh, yeah, nicely documents it. So if you want to play around with the Pico, uh, just to sort of get used to how things work, it's worth having a look at this guide. All the details in there. Well done, Les. And last up was a uh, lawnmower, and it says here you can build yourself. I don't think I'll be going quite so ambitious as that, because it looks pretty keen. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a robotic lawnmower which is, uh, yeah, something a little different. I don't think I've covered lawnmowers before. Uh, actually, I'll play a tiny bit of the video. Yeah, you can see it here, look, covering the lawn. 
and it's got a camera on it. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description to this, uh, but it looks like it's definitely worth looking at. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.